circumcision and law, laws restricting, regulating, or banning circumcision, some dating back to ancient times, have been enacted in many countries and communities. In modern states, circumcision is generally presumed to be illegal, but laws pertaining to assault or child custody have been applied in cases involving circumcision. There are currently no states that unequivocally ban infant male circumcision for non therapeutic reasons. In the case of non therapeutic circumcision of children, proponents of laws in favor of the procedure often point to the rights of the parents or practitioners, namely the right of freedom to religion. Those against the procedure point to the boy's right of freedom from religion. In several court cases, judges have pointed to the irreversible nature of the act, the grievous harm to the boy's body, and the right to self determination and bodily integrity. There are ancient religious requirements for circumcision. The Hebrew Bible commands Jews to circumcise their male children on the eighth day of life, and to circumcise their male slaves. Laws banning circumcision are also ancient. The ancient Greeks prized the foreskin and disapproved of the Jewish custom of circumcision. 1 Maccabees, 160-61 states that King Antiochus IV of Syria, the occupying power of Judea in 170 BCE, outlawed circumcision on penalty of death. One of the grievances leading to the Maccabean revolt. According to the Historia Augusta, the Roman Emperor Hadrian issued a decree banning circumcision in the empire, and some modern scholars argue that these was the main cause of the Jewish Bar Kokhba the revolt of 132 CE. The Roman historian Cassius Dio, however, made no mention of such a law, and blamed the Jewish uprising instead on Hadrian's decision to rebuild Jerusalem as Elia Capitolina, a city dedicated to Jupiter. Antoninus Pius permitted Jews to circumcise their own sons. However, he forbade the circumcision of non-Jews that were either foreign slaves or non-Jewish members of the household, contrary to he also made it illegal for a man to convert to Judaism. Antoninus Pius exempted the Egyptian priesthood from the otherwise universal ban on circumcision. Before Glasnost, according to an article in the Jewish press, Jewish ritual circumcision was forbidden in the USSR. However, David E. Fishman Professor of Jewish History at the Jewish Theological Seminary of America, states that, whereas the Heder and Yeshiva, the organs of Jewish education, were banned by virtue of the law separating church and school, and subjected to tough police and administrative actions, circumcision was no proscribed by law or suppressed by executive measures. Yehoshua Gilboa writes that while circumcision was not officially or explicitly banned, pressure was exerted to make it difficult. Mules in particular were concerned that they could be punished for any health issue that might develop, even if it arose some time after the circumcision. In 1967 all religion in communist Albania was banned, along with the practice of circumcision. The practice was driven underground and many boys were secretly circumcised. Whereas child custody regulations have been applied to cases involving circumcision, there seems to be no state which currently unequivocally bans infant male circumcision for non-therapeutic reasons, albeit the legality of such circumcision is disputed in some legislations. The present table provides a non-exhaustive overview comparing legal restrictions and requirements on non-therapeutic infant circumcision in several countries. Some countries require one or both parents to consent to the operation, some of these, Finland, United Kingdom have experienced legal battles between parents when one of them had their son's circumcision carried out or planned without the other's consent. Some countries require the procedure to be performed by or supervised by a qualified physician, or a qualified nurse in Sweden, and with, local, anesthesia applied to the boy or man. In 1993, a non-binding research paper of the Queensland Law Reform Commission, Circumcision of Male Infants, concluded that on a strict interpretation of the assault provisions of the Queensland Criminal Code, routine circumcision of a male infant could be regarded as a criminal act, and that doctors who perform circumcision on male infants may be liable to civil claims by that child at a later date. No prosecutions have occurred in Queensland, and circumcisions continue to be performed. In 1999, a Perth man won 360,000 Australian dollars in damages after a doctor admitted he botched a circumcision operation at birth which left the man with a badly deformed penis. In 2002, Queensland police charged a father with grievous bodily harm for having his two sons, then aged 9 and 5, circumcised without the knowledge and against the wishes of the mother. The mother and father were in a family court dispute. The charges were dropped when the police prosecutor revealed that he did not have all family court paperwork in court and the magistrate refused to grant an adjournment. 
Cosmetic circumcision for newborn males is currently banned in all Australian public hospitals, South Australia being the last state to adopt the ban in 2007. The procedure was not forbidden from being performed in private hospitals. In the same year, the Tasmanian president of the Australian Medical Association, Hayden Walters, stated that they would support a call to ban circumcision for non-medical, non-religious reasons. In 2009, the Tasmanian Law Reform Institute released its issues paper investigating the law relating to male circumcision in Tasmania. It highlights the uncertainty in relation to whether doctors can legally perform circumcision on infant males. The Tasmania Law Reform Institute released its recommendations for reform of Tasmanian law relative to male circumcision on August 21, 2012. The report makes 14 recommendations for reform of Tasmanian law relative to male circumcision. In 2012, Lassoir reported a 21% increase in the amount of circumcisions in Belgium from 2006 and 2011. In the previous 25 years, one in three Belgian-born boys had allegedly been circumcised. A questionnaire to hospitals in Wallonia and Brussels showed that about 80 to 90% of the procedures had religious or cultural motives. The Ministry of Health stressed the importance of safe circumstances. Physicians warned that no surgical procedure is without risk and that circumcision was not a necessary procedure. In 2017, it was estimated that about 15% of Belgian men were circumcised. The incidence has been gradually rising. In 2002, about 17,800 boys or men underwent circumcision, which increased to almost 26,200 in 2016. The expenses of undergoing circumcision are covered by the National Institute for Disease and Disability Insurance, RISIV slash ANAMI, costing about 2.7 million euros in 2016. After inquiries were submitted to the Belgian Bioethics Advisory Committee in early 2014, an ethics commission was set up to review the morality of covering the costs of medically unnecessary surgery through taxpayer money, especially considering that many taxpayers regard the practice as immoral. By July 2017, the commission reportedly reached consensus on discontinuing the financial coverage of non-medical circumcision but was still debating whether to advise the government to institute a total ban of the practice. The Commission's final, non-binding, recommendation, presented on September 19, 2017, was to cease public funding for non-medical circumcision, and to not circumcise anyone under age until they can consent or reject the procedure after being properly informed. This was in line with the 1990 Convention on the Rights of the Child and mirrors the 2013 non-binding Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe's resolution against underage non-therapeutic circumcision. However, Health Minister Maggie de Bloc rejected the Commission's advice, arguing the RISIV cannot know whether there is a medical motive or not when parents request a circumcision, and when they are denied a professional procedure, chances are parents will hate a non-expert perform it, leading to worse results for the children. The Health Minister's response was received with mixed reactions. According to the College of Physicians and Surgeons of British Columbia, a January 2018 survey by polling company Megafon for the television network TV2 showed that 83% of Danish citizens favored a ban on circumcising boys. A citizens' initiative demanding a minimum age of 18 for circumcision to protect children's fundamental rights reached 50,000 signatures on June 1, 2018, forcing the Danish parliament to consider it. It is unsure whether the proposal will gain a majority. On 13 August, according to the World Israel News, the ban on circumcision was overruled after several protests by religious right groups. A study commissioned by the European Parliament Committee on Civil Liberties, Justice and Home Affairs published in February 2013 stated that male circumcision for non-therapeutic reasons appears to be practiced with relative regularity and frequency throughout Europe, and said it was the only scenario. Among the topics discussed in the present chapter, in which the outcome of the balancing between the right to physical integrity and religious freedom is in favor of the latter. The study recommended that the best interests of children should be paramount, while acknowledging the relevance of this practice for Muslims and Jews. Member states should ensure that circumcision of underage children is performed according to the medical profession's art and under conditions that do not put the health of minors at risk. The introduction of regulations by the member states in order to set the conditions and the appropriate medical training for those called to perform it is warranted. On October 1, 2013, the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe adopted a non binding resolution in which they state they are particularly worried about a category of violation of the physical integrity of children and included in this category circumcision of young boys for religious reasons. On 7 October, 
Israel's President Shimon Peres wrote a personal missive to the Secretary General of the Council of Europe, Torbjörn Jagland, to stop the ban, arguing, the Jewish communities across Europe would be greatly afflicted to see their cultural and religious freedom impeded upon by the Council of Europe, an institution devoted to the protection of these very rights. Two days later, Jagland clarified that the resolution was non-binding and had nothing in the body of our legally binding standards would lead us to put on equal footing the issue of female genital mutilation and the circumcision of young boys for religious reasons. As of February 2018, no European country has a ban on male circumcision, but Iceland was planning to become the first to outlaw the practice for non-medical reasons. In August 2006, a Finnish court ruled that the circumcision of a four-year-old boy arranged by his mother, who is Muslim, to be an illegal assault. The boy's father, who had not been consulted, reported the incident to the police. A local prosecutor stated that the prohibition of circumcision is not gender specific in Finnish law. A lawyer for the Ministry of Social Affairs and Health stated that there is neither legislation nor prohibition on male circumcision, and that the operations have been performed on the basis of common law. The case was appealed and in October 2008 the Finnish Supreme Court ruled that circumcision, carried out for religious and social reasons and in a medical manner, did not have the earmarks of a criminal offense. It pointed out in its ruling that the circumcision of Muslim boys is an established tradition and an integral part of the identity of Muslim men. In 2008, the Finnish government was reported to be considering a new law to legalize circumcision if the practitioner is a doctor and if the child consents. In December 2011, Helsinki District Court said that the Supreme Court's decision does not mean that circumcision is legal for any non-medical reasons. The court referred to the Convention on Human Rights and Biomedicine of the Council of Europe, which was ratified in Finland in 2010. In February 2010, a Jewish couple were fined for causing bodily harm to their then-infant son who was circumcised in 2008 by a Mohel Broaden from the UK. Normal procedure for persons of Jewish faith in Finland is to have a locally certified Mohel who works in Finnish healthcare perform the operation. In the 2008 case, the infant was not anesthetized and developed complications that required immediate hospital care. The parents were ordered to pay €1,500 in damages to their child. In October 2006, a Turkish national who performed ritual circumcisions on seven boys was convicted of causing dangerous bodily harm by the state court in Dusseldorf. In September 2007, a Frankfurt am Main appeals court found that the circumcision of an 11-year-old boy without his approval was an unlawful personal injury. The boy, whose parents were divorced, was visiting his Muslim father during a vacation when his father forced him to be ritually circumcised. The boy had planned to sue his father for. In May 2012, the Cologne Regional Appellate Court ruled that religious circumcision of male children amounts to bodily injury, and is a criminal offense in theory under its jurisdiction. The decision based on the article Criminal Relevance of Circumcising Boys. A contribution to the limitation of consent in case of care for the person of the child published by Holm Putzky, a German law professor at the University of Passau. The court arrived at its judgment by application of the human rights provisions of the Basic Law a section of the Civil Code, and some sections of the Criminal Code to non-therapeutic circumcision of male children. Some observers said it could set a legal precedent that criminalizes the practice. Jewish and Muslim groups were outraged by the ruling, viewing it as trampling on freedom of religion. The German ambassador to Israel, Andreas Michaelis, told Israeli lawmakers that Germany was working to resolve the issue and that it doesn't apply at a national level, but instead only to the local jurisdiction of the court in Cologne. The Council of the Coordination of Muslims in Germany condemned the ruling, stating that it is a serious attack on religious freedom. Ali Kizilkaya, a spokesman of the Council, stated that, the ruling does not take everything into account, religious practice concerning circumcision of young Muslims and Jews has been carried out over the millennia on a global level. The Roman Catholic Archbishop of Aachen, Heinrich Mussinghoff, said that the ruling was very surprising and the contradiction between basic rights and freedom of religion and the well-being of the child brought up by the judges is not convincing in this very case. Hans Ulrich Hanke, the head of the Protestant Church in Germany, said the ruling should be appealed since it didn't sufficiently consider the religious significance of the right. A spokesman, Stefan Siebert, for German Chancellor Angela Merkel stated that Jewish and Muslim communities will be free to practice circumcision responsibly, and the government would find a way around the local ban in Cologne. The spokesman stated for everyone in the government it is absolutely clear that want to have Jewish and Muslim religious life in Germany.
circumcision carried out in a responsible manner must be possible in this country without punishment. In July, a group of rabbis, imams, and others said that they view the ruling against circumcision an affront on our basic religious and human rights. The joint statement was signed by leaders of groups including Germany's Turkish Islamic Union for Religious Affairs, the Islamic Center Brussels, the Rabbinical Center of Europe, the European Jewish Parliament and the European Jewish Association, who met with members of European Parliament from Germany, Finland, Belgium, Italy, and Poland. European rabbis, who urged Jews to continue circumcision, plan further talks with Muslim and Christian leaders to determine how they can oppose the ban together. The Jewish Hospital of Berlin suspended the practice of male circumcision. On July 19, 2012, a joint resolution of the CDU CSU, SPD, and FDP factions in the Bundestag requesting the executive branch to draft a law permitting circumcision of boys to be performed without unnecessary pain in accordance with best medical practice carried with a broad majority. The New York Times reported that the German Medical Association condemned the ruling for potentially putting children at risk by taking the procedure out of the hands of doctors, but it also warned surgeons not to perform circumcisions for religious reasons until legal clarity was established. The ruling was supported by Deutsch Kinderhilfe, a German child rights organization, which asked for a two-year moratorium to discuss the issue and pointed out that religious circumcision may contravene the Convention on the Rights of the Child, Article 24.3. States parties shall take all effective and appropriate measures with a view to abolishing traditional practices prejudicial to the health of children. The German Academy for Pediatric and Adolescent Medicine, Deutsche Akademie für Kinder und Jugendmedis in EB, Dach, the German Association for Pediatric Surgery, Deutsche Gesellschaft für Kinderchirurgie, DGKCH, and the Professional Association of Pediatric and Adolescent Physicians, Berufsverband der Kinder und Jugendarzte took a firm stand against non-medical routine infant circumcision. In July, in Berlin, a criminal complaint was lodged against Rabbi Yitzhak Ehrenberg for causing bodily harm by performing religious circumcision, and for vocal support of the continuation of the practice. In September, the prosecutors dismissed the complaint, concluding that there is no proof to establish that the rabbi's conduct met the condition of a criminal violation. In September, Reuters reported Berlin Senate said doctors could legally circumcise infant boys for religious reasons in its region, given certain conditions. On December 12, 2012, following a series of hearings and consultations, the Bundestag adopted the proposed law explicitly permitting non-therapeutic circumcision to be performed under certain conditions, it is now Section 1631d in the German Civil Code. The vote tally was 434 eyes. 100 no's, and 46 abstentions. Following approval by the Bundesrat and signing by the Bundespräsident, the new law became effective on December 28, 2012, a day after its publication in the Federal Gazette. In February 2018, Iceland was planning to become the first European country to ban male circumcision for non medical reasons. The bill discussed in the Althing, the Icelandic Parliament, claimed the practice harmed the physical integrity of young boys was often performed without anesthesia and in an unhygienic manner by religious leaders instead of medical experts. These facts were deemed incompatible with the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, 1990, and the bill proposed a penalty of up to six years' imprisonment for any violation of the ban. Critics argued the bill infringed on religious freedom or constituted anti-Semitism or anti-Muslim bigotry, making it hard for Muslims and Jews to live there. Celia Dogunaris Doher of the Progressive Party who proposed the ban, retorted that Iceland had already prohibited female circumcision in 2005, and if we have laws banning circumcision for girls, then we should do so for boys. On 29 April, the bill was sent back to Parliament for revision. Despite rumors to the contrary spread by the Times of Israel and others in late April, the bill was not scrapped, but is still a work in progress. In October 2005 a Nigerian man was cleared of a charge of reckless endangerment over the death of a baby from hemorrhage and shock after he had circumcised its child. The judge directed the jury not to bring what he called their white western values to bear when they were deciding this case and effectively imposed a not guilty verdict on the jury. After deliberating for an hour and a half they found the defendant not guilty. In Israel, Jewish circumcision is entirely legal. Though illegal, Female circumcision is still practiced among the Negev Bedouin, and tribal secrecy among the Bedouin makes it difficult for authorities to enforce the ban. In 2013, rabbinical court in Israel ordered a mother, Eleanor Daniel, 
to circumcise her son or pay a fine of 500 Israeli shekel for every day that the child is not circumcised. She appealed against the rabbinical court ruling and the high court ruled in her favor stating, among other considerations, the basic right of freedom from religion. In May 2008 a father who had his two sons, aged three and six circumcised against the will of their mother was found not guilty of abuse as the circumcision was performed via physician and due to the court's restraint in setting a legal precedent, instead he was given a six-week suspended jail sentence for taking the boys away from their mother against her will. In June 2012, the center-right center party proposed a ban on circumcision on males under 18, after an Oslo infant died in May following a circumcision. In September 2013, the Children's Ombudsman in all Nordic countries issued a statement by which they called for a ban on circumcision of minors for non-medical reasons, stating that such circumcisions violate the rights of children after the Convention on the Rights of the Child to Co-Determination and Protection from Harmful Traditions. A bill on ritual circumcision of boys was passed, against two votes, in the Norwegian parliament in June 2014, with a new law going into effect on 1 January 2015. This law protects the right of Jews to Brit Mila and obligates the Norwegian healthcare regions to offer the Muslim minority a safe and affordable procedure. Local anesthesia needs to be applied and a licensed physician needs to be present at the circumcision, which hospitals started to perform in March 2015. In May 2017, the right-wing Progress Party proposed to ban circumcision for males under 16. The Children's Act 2005 makes the circumcision of male children under 16 unlawful except for religious or medical reasons. In the Eastern Cape Province the application of health standards in Traditional Circumcision Act, 2001, regulates traditional circumcision, which causes the death or mutilation of many youths by traditional surgeons each year. Among other provisions, the minimum age for circumcision is age 18. In 2004, a 22-year-old Rastafarian convert was forcibly circumcised by a group of Kosa tribal elders and relatives. When he first fled, two police returned him to those who had circumcised him. In another case, a medically circumcised Kosa man was forcibly recircumcised by his father and community leaders. He laid a charge of unfair discrimination on the grounds of his religious beliefs, seeking an apology from his father and the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa. According to South African newspapers, the subsequent trial became a landmark case around forced circumcision. In October 2009, the Eastern Cape High Court of Bishu, sitting as an equality court, clarified that circumcision is unlawful unless done with the full consent of the initiate. In 2001, the Parliament of Sweden enacted a law allowing only persons certified by the National Board of Health to circumcise infants. It requires a medical doctor or an anesthesia nurse to accompany the circumciser and for anesthetic to be applied beforehand. After the first two months of life circumcisions can only be performed by a physician. The stated purpose of the law was to increase the safety of the procedure. Swedish Jews and Muslims objected to the law, and in 2001, the World Jewish Congress called it the first legal restriction on Jewish religious practice in Europe since the Nazi era. The requirement for an anesthetic to be administered by a medical professional is a major issue, and the low degree of availability of certified professionals willing to conduct circumcision has also been subject to criticism. According to a survey, two out of three pediatric surgeons said they refuse to perform non therapeutic circumcision and less than half of all county councils offer it in their hospitals. However, in 2006, the U.S. State Department stated, in a report on Sweden, that most Jewish malls had been certified under the law and 3,000 Muslim and 40 to 50 Jewish boys were circumcised each year. An estimated 2,000 of these are performed by persons who are neither physicians nor have officially recognized certification. The Swedish National Board of Health and Welfare reviewed the law in 2005 and recommended that it be maintained but found that the law had failed with regard to the intended consequence of increasing the safety of circumcisions. A later report by the board criticized the low level of availability of legal circumcisions, partly due to reluctance among health professionals. To remedy this, the report suggested a new law obliging all county councils to offer non-therapeutic circumcision in their hospitals, but this was later abandoned in favor of a non-binding recommendation. Male circumcision has traditionally been presumed to be legal under British law, however some authors have argued that there is no solid foundation for this view in English law. The passage of the Human Rights Act 1998 has led to some speculation that the lawfulness of the circumcision of male children is unclear. One 1999 case, Rije, 
child's religious upbringing and circumcision, said that circumcision in Britain required the consent of all those with parental responsibility however this comment was not part of the reason for the judgment and therefore is not legally binding, or the permission of the court, acting for the best interests of the child, and issued an order prohibiting the circumcision of a male child of a non-practicing Muslim father and non-practicing Christian mother with custody. The reasoning included evidence that circumcision carried some medical risk, that the operation would be likely to weaken the relationship of the child with his mother who strongly objected to circumcision without medical necessity, that the child may be subject to ridicule by his peers as the odd one out and that the operation might irreversibly reduce sexual pleasure, by permanently removing some sensory nerves, even though cosmetic foreskin restoration might be possible. The court did not rule out circumcision against the consent of one parent. It cited a hypothetical case of a Jewish mother and an agnostic father with a number of sons, all of whom, by agreement, had been circumcised as infants in accordance with Jewish laws, the parents then have another son who was born after they have separated, the mother wishes him to be circumcised like his brothers, the father for no good reason, refuses his agreement. In such a case, a decision in favor of circumcision was said to be likely. In 2001 the General Medical Council had found a doctor who had botched circumcision operations guilty of abusing his professional position and that he had acted inappropriately and irresponsibly and struck him off the register. A doctor who had referred patients to him, and who had pressured a mother into agreeing to the surgery, was also condemned. He was put on an 18-month period of review and retraining, and was allowed to resume unrestricted practice as a doctor in March 2003, after a committee found that he had complied with conditions it placed on him. According to the Northern Echo, he told the committee he has now changed his approach to circumcision referrals, accepting that most cases can be treated without the need for surgery. Fox and Thompson, 2005, argue that consent cannot be given for non-therapeutic circumcision. They say there is no compelling legal authority for the common view that circumcision is lawful. In 2005 a Muslim man had his son circumcised against the wishes of the child's mother who was the custodial parent. In 2009 it was reported that a 20-year-old man whose father had him ritually circumcised as a baby is preparing to sue the doctor who circumcised him. This is believed to be the first time a person who was circumcised as an infant has made a claim in the UK. The case is expected to be heard in 2010. In a 2015 case regarding female circumcision, a judge concluded that non-therapeutic circumcision of male children is a significant harm. In 2016, the family court in Exeter ruled that a Muslim father could not have his two sons, aged six and four, circumcised after their mother disagreed. Mrs. Justice Roberts declared that the boys should first grow old enough to the point where each of the boys themselves will make their individual choices once they have the maturity and insight to appreciate the consequences and longer term effects of the decisions which they reach. In June 2017, Nottinghamshire police arrested three people on suspicion of conspiracy to commit grievous bodily harm. The alleged victim was purportedly circumcised while in its Muslim father's care at his grandparents in July 2013 without the consent of his mother, a non-religious white British woman who conceived the child after a casual affair with the man, whom she had separated from after the incident. The mother first contacted social services and eventually the police in November 2014. The police initially dismissed the complaint. But after the mother got help from the anti-circumcision group Men Do Complain and leading human rights lawyer Simo Chahal Kuse, they reopened the case, and ended up arresting three suspects involved. In November 2017, the Crown Prosecution Service explained to the mother in a letter they were not going to prosecute the doctor, who claimed he was unaware of the mother's non-consent. However, Chahal appealed this decision, which she said lacks any semblance of a considered and reasoned decision and is flawed and irrational and threatened to bring the case to court. The by then 29-year-old mother finally sued the doctor in April 2018. Neil McRae, mental health expert from King's College London, argued that this case could mean the end of ritual male circumcision in the UK, drawing comparisons with earlier rulings against female genital mutilation. Circumcision of adults who grant personal informed consent for the surgical operation is legal. In the United States, non-therapeutic circumcision of male children has long been assumed to be lawful in every jurisdiction provided that one parent grants surrogate informed consent. Adler, 2013, has recently challenged the validity of this assumption. As with every country, doctors who circumcise children must take care that all applicable rules regarding informed consent and safety are satisfied. While anti-circumcision groups have occasionally proposed legislation banning non-therapeutic child circumcision, 
It has not been supported in any legislature. After a failed attempt to adopt a local ordinance banning circumcision on a San Francisco ballot, the state of California enacted in October 2011 a law protecting circumcision from local attempts to ban the practice. In 2012, New York City required those performing Metzite Subpay, a part of circumcision required by some Hasidim, to obey stringent consent requirements, including documentation. Egudath Israel of America and other Jewish groups have planned to sue the city in response. Disputes between parents Occasionally the courts are asked to make a ruling when parents cannot agree on whether or not to circumcise a child. In January 2001 a dispute between divorcing parents in New Jersey was resolved when the mother, who sought to have the boy circumcised withdrew her request. The boy had experienced two instances of foreskin inflammation and she wanted to have him circumcised. The father, who had experienced a traumatic circumcision as a child objected and they turned to the courts for a decision. The Medical Society of New Jersey and the Urological Society of New Jersey both opposed any court-ordered medical treatment. As the parties came to an agreement, no precedent was set. In June 2001 a Nevada court settled a dispute over circumcision between two parents but put a strict gag order on the terms of the settlement. In July 2001 a dispute between parents in Kansas over circumcision was resolved when the mother's request to have the infant circumcised was withdrawn. In this case the father opposed circumcision while the mother asserted that not circumcising the child was against her religious beliefs. The woman's pastor had stated that circumcision was important but was not necessary for salvation. On July 24, 2001 the parents reached agreement that the infant would not be circumcised. On July 14, 2004 a mother appealed to the Missouri Supreme Court to prevent the circumcision of her son after a county court and the Court of Appeals had denied her a writ of prohibition. However, in early August 2004, before the Supreme Court had given its ruling, the father, who had custody of the boy, had him circumcised. In October 2006 a judge in Chicago granted an injunction blocking the circumcision of a nine-year-old boy. In granting the injunction the judge stated that the boy could decide for himself whether to be circumcised when he turns 18. In November 2007, the Oregon Supreme Court heard arguments from a divorced Oregon couple over the circumcision of their son. The father wanted his son, who turned 13 on March 2, 2008, to be circumcised in accordance with the father's religious views. The child's mother opposes the procedure. The parents dispute whether the boy is in favor of the procedure. A group opposed to circumcision filed briefs in support of the mother's position, while some Jewish groups filed the brief in support of the father. On January 25, 2008, the court returned the case to the trial court with instructions to determine whether the child agrees or objects to the proposed circumcision. The father appealed to the U.S. Supreme Court to allow him to have his son circumcised. Boothie's appeal was rejected. The case then returned to the trial court. When the trial court interviewed the couple's son, now 14 years old, the boy stated that he did not want to be circumcised. This also provided the necessary circumstances to allow the boy to change residence to live with his mother. The boy was not circumcised. Other disputes In September 2004 the North Dakota Supreme Court rejected a mother's attempt to prosecute her doctor for circumcising her child without fully informing her of the consequences of the procedure. The judge and jury found that the defendants were adequately informed of possible complications, and the jury further found that it is not incumbent on the doctors to describe every insignificant risk. In March 2009 a Fulton County, Georgia State court jury awarded $2.3 million in damages to a four-year-old boy and his mother for a botched circumcision in which too much tissue was removed causing permanent disfigurement. In August 2010 an eight-day-old boy was circumcised in a Florida hospital against the stated wishes of the parents. The hospital admitted that the boy was circumcised by mistake, the mother has sued the hospital and the doctor involved in the case. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.